In this video, we're going to be solving this problem again. Now, I already did a video where I solved this problem using block diagram reduction, but in this video, I'm going to do it with a more direct method. And this is for if either you don't like doing block diagram reduction because there's too much redrawing of everything, or you want to check your work when you do block diagram reduction, uh, you can use this method. So I call this the direct algebraic method, and it's just a matter of figuring out what each signal is and then putting it all together to find our transfer function. So the problem still is find the transfer function from the output or input x to the output y. So what I do to start doing this sort of problem is I just go ahead and label all of the signals that aren't already labeled. So the signals, of course, are just the arrows. So all of this, that's already labeled x. Uh, I'm going to call this signal right here A, coming out of G1. I'm going to call this one B, coming out of that summing junction. C, after G3. D here. E here. This one's already called Y. I'm going to call this all this up here. That's going to be F. And then the next letter in the alphabet is G, but we already have all these Gs all over the place. So I'm going to call this feedback signal H. So now that we've got all our signals labeled, I'm just going to go ahead and start writing equations for what each of them are, sort of working from the end to the beginning. So first I'll start with Y. What's Y going to be? Y is the signal E times G6. So Y is equal to E G6. And then what's E? E is just D times G4. So E is D G4. And then now we have to solve for D. So D is just going to be these two signals combined. So that's going to be C plus F. Or I'll write F plus C. And then we can now either solve for C or F. I'm just going to do F. So I'll write it up here maybe. F is equal to G2 times X or X G2. So now we know that we're done with one branch at least because F is in terms of X and we want to basically get everything in terms of X, Y, and G. So that way we can find our transfer function because we don't care about any of these intermediate signals. So this F1, that's done already. So we'll go back to the C. So we can solve for a C and that's just gonna be B times G3. And then solving for B, it's the combination of all the things coming into this sum and junction. So we're going to have A minus F plus H. Then we have to solve for A, and we already have F, and then we have to solve for H. So let's start with A. A is going to be X times G1. So I'll write that over here. And then H is a little different. So all these other ones that we solved for, they're all in the feed forward direction. So they're all going to the right. But this H is coming from the left. So instead of working our way backwards to solve from X, we're going to work our way forwards and end up solving in terms of Y. So H to start is going to be G5 times the signal E. And then we're still working in this direction, trying to go back to y. So we know that e from this equation over here, we can rearrange it to be that e is equal to y over g6. So we can just go ahead and replace that here. So we'll have g5 times y over g6, or g5 over g6, and then that's all multiplied by y. And if you tried solving for this H in terms of X's, you would end up going to this E, and then you'd have to solve for D, then C and F, B and A. You just keep ending up having to solve for H, and you would never actually get it just in terms of X. So that's why we go back the other way, and we have to find it in terms of Y. But you would probably pretty figure that out pretty quickly if you tried doing it the other way. So now, basically, we've got everything so that we can reduce it all down to in terms of X, Y, and the G's. So let's go ahead and start combining some of these and see what we get. So I'm just going to go ahead and start with this first equation. Y is equal to 
E, G, 6. And we want to get rid of that E since it's not an X, Y, or G. So we'll replace it with E equals D, G, 4. So D, G, 4, G, 6. And we've got to replace that D. So D is equal to F plus C. And we'll leave that G4, G6. Now we've got to replace this F and C. So luckily for us, F is just X, G2. So that part's going to be done. And then C is B, G3. We'll leave that G4, G6 at the end. Okay, so now we just have to replace this B. So B is A minus F plus H. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there. So I'm gonna do brackets now. So X, G, two plus A minus F plus H, G, three, close bracket, G, four, G, six. And now we have to replace this A, F, and H. So luckily for us, we're sort of at the end of the line of replacing things here, because A we have in terms of X, F we have in terms of X, and H we have in terms of Y. So this is the last time we'll need to look up here, but we'll go ahead and throw those in here. So we'll have X, G, 2, plus A is going to be replaced by X, G, 1, minus F is going to be replaced by X, G, 2, plus H is going to be replaced by Y times G, 5 over G, 6. And then we'll have G3, close bracket, G4, G6. So now it's just a matter of some algebra. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply all this out now. So we can just get individual terms. Starting with the first term, we'll have X, G2, G4, G6. Plus... We'll have x, g1, g3, g4, g6. Minus x, g2, g3, g4, g6. And then our last term, I'm going to put it down here. Plus y, this g6 is going to cancel with that g6. So we'll just have g3, g4, g5. All right, and we have to remember that all is equal to y. And from here, I'm going to move all the terms that are in terms of y to one side and all the terms that are in terms of x to the other side. So on the left side, we'll have y, and this positive becomes a minus, y times g3, 4, 5. equal to just these three terms up here. X, G2, G4, G6, plus X, G1, G3, G4, G6, minus X, G2, G3, G4, G6. Okay, now you don't have to write this step out, but I will just for completeness. I'm going to factor out a y from this side and an x from the right hand side. So y times 1 minus g3, g4, g5 is equal to x times just all of these g's. Okay, and then the last step from here, now that we've got this x and y factored out, is just to write the transfer function. If we look back at our original problem, we know that y is the output, x is the input. So what we're looking for is going to be y over x. And that's just going to be, uh, we'll leave this on top, and then we'll divide the x over here, and then divide by this part over there. So we'll have all of this in the numerator g2, g4, g6, plus g1, g3, g4, g6, 
minus g2, g3, g4, g6. And that's going to be all over 1 minus g3, g4, g5. And this is our final answer. So looking back at the original problem, we know that all of this mess can be replaced, just be replaced with one block that's this transfer function. So like I said earlier, I solved this problem already once using block diagram reduction and I got the same answer, so that's good. And I'll go ahead and link that video down below. And I also have another video where I derive the rules for block diagram reduction if you want to check that out. But other than that, this is the answer to this problem using the direct algebraic method. And thanks for watching.